Hey guys, Professor Bill Comic Book University and Daredevil issue number 14, one of the best books out there, one of the best books on the market, continues that tradition with this issue. Damn, I'm going to tell you five things about this comic book after we talk about who made it. So, this is Going Through Hell, uh, part four. Uh, Chip Sardowski is the writer, Marco Cecheco and Francesco Mobili doing the art, Nolan Woodard on color art. And VC Clayton Cowell's doing the letters. Julian Titino Tedesco does this sexy cover. 2020 variant cover is by Scan. All right, so we've got number one on this list. Want to get some coffee? Hey, man, you ever seen Heat? This was a movie back then. I know everybody today is like, oh, my God, The Irishman. You got to see it. Yeah, one of these days I'll get around to doing, you know, doing a little Netflix and watching The Irishman, all right? It's hard enough trying to watch The Mandalorian, which is the best freaking show on TV. So watching a full-length movie, my God, how am I going to get the time to do that? Anyway, The Irishman, you know, Al Pacino and, and um, yeah, the, the, the other guy, Robert De Niro. There we go. But you know what movie they first met in? Like, actually first met in? You might say The Godfather. No, they were both in Godfather Part Two, but they never actually met, their characters never actually met them themselves as the actors. When they actually happened was in Heat. All right, Val Kilmer was in that movie also. Probably the best role he ever did where he wasn't playing the Iceman. More on that later. <laughs> no, not more on that later. It's movie Top Gun. Anyway, so the movie Heat. Freaking amazing movie, right? One of the best gunfight scenes ever ever in movie history. And there's a part in there where uh, De Niro and Pacino actually meet for the first time and they're staring at each other and it's like, oh my God, one's a cop, one's an outlaw. They're going to wind up shooting each other. They both going to die. And it's just like, you want to get some coffee? Yeah. Yeah, I can go for some coffee. And it's just... <laughs> Like, it's an epic scene, especially if you saw it for the first time and you're just like, holy crap, this is like they've never met on screen before. And these are the two ultimate, you know, Italian guys, you know, the mafia guys or whatever. Holy crap. That was epic. So that's kind of what happens here. It's not quite as epic, but that's the, the taste that I got when I was reading this between Detective North and Matt Murdock as Daredevil, but, you know, just not in costume necessarily. This was this was a really cool moment. In this moment, there's a really dumb thing that's said. Um, and you got to remember that Chip Sardosky used to be, before he was Chip Sardosky, what do you mean that's not his real name? Wikipedia, the guy, you'll understand. He used to be a journalist. So he wrote about the news. He wrote about, you know, all the, the current goings on in the world, right? One of the things that I'm sure he's written about at some point was how cops can get away with murder. That doesn't happen as much here in Canada, but, you know, <laughs> it can still happen. It still happens. They're judged, uh, cops are judged on a different scale than normal citizens are. Oh, yeah, sure. There's some people who might say, well, of course they should be. But there are others, others of us who would completely disagree because that's when you give too much power to cops and that's when enough cops abuse it. Even if it's one cop who abuses it, that's enough. Because the people who are abused, yeah. So, at the end of the day, Detective North thinks that he's actually doing the right thing. Sure, but do you actually have the proper background to do this? And Matt Murdock, who's a lawyer, by the way, Detective North doesn't know that, he calls him out on it. And North doesn't want to hear it. And this is great dialogue between these. This is why I'm comparing this to the first, you know, to that movie Heat. There's great dialogue in here because for the love of God, man, like when, when somebody tries to call you out on your crap and all of a sudden you dare to call them out on their crap, that's when the fireworks happen. How dare you judge me while I'm judging you? Detective North is a jackass and I love the way that he's written. Let's talk about number two on this list, and that is the Koch brothers. They're trying to move in on the um, the Wilson Fisk family right now. Um, long, complicated story. If you weren't reading the past couple of issues, you should. Just know that Kingpin is, uh, Kingpin Wilson Fisk has dropped the title of Kingpin. He's no longer, he's, he's completely legit right now. Uh, all the crimes that he does are just in the mayor's office, uh, you know, New York City mayor. So, yeah, crimes that he's 100% going to get away with, right? Because we hold each other on different 
scales according to our status in society. Anyhow, um, this was very interesting. No, it's not the actual Koch brothers. And if you don't know who the Koch brothers is, let me remind you that Chip Zardowski used to be a, a journalist. So we could talk politics on, in regards to this comic book in a heartbeat because politics exists here, but it's done in a very, very neutral tone. Loved that. Loved that. Anyway, these Koch brother wannabes, they're moving in on Fisk's um, uh, business ventures. I love where this is going because you don't know what Fisk is going to do. But uh, lately, Zardowski, he's been writing, uh, not lately, Zardowski has been writing the Kingpin somewhat similar to the way that we've seen Vincent D'Onofrio playing him in the Daredevil Netflix TV series. Can't go wrong with that. He's still the comic book kingpin where he's much smarter. He's much more in control of himself, but he does have the tendency to lose his temper here. And it's understood why, because of what he's been going through, what he's been doing, the transitions he's been making and who's been, you know, stirring heat, who's been stirring the pot. So I think that this is the absolute most organic way you could possibly try to get kingpin more like this popular television version of the kingpin. I love what I'm reading here, my peeps. Let's start talking about number three, finally. Mansplaining. Mindy, the girl who is cheating on her vile mafia boyfriend, uh, excuse me, husband, uh, father of her children, who are probably going to wind up being sucked into the crime family also at some point, run by his mama. Yeah. Uh, Mindy, who's just making wrong decision after wrong decision, uh, and Matt is benefiting from those because he's the one getting that nookie. Um, she doesn't say that he's mansplaining, but she definitely gives off the air that he's mansplaining. Now, in order to understand what mansplaining is, allow me to mansplain this. Basically, mansplaining, I'm not really going to do that, but mansplaining is when a man explains something to a woman, not dead, stop. If that were the case, then she'd be right, but she's wrong. When it's done in the tone, in the vein that I am a man and you are just a woman. So allow me to explain things. Let me dumb it down. Let me slow things down. Let me use smaller words, all right? And explain it to you in simpler terms what exactly this means and why you're wrong and you have to fit into this mold that society has for you. That is mansplaining. Daredevil, does not, as Matt Murdock, does not do that in any way, shape, or form here. But since she continuously makes wrong decisions, she decides to suggest that he is. This gets even worse because she slaps him. This might seem like, you know, whatever. I was slapped once when I was younger. I was at play, Johnny Caesar, and this girl acting out another scene slaps me. I saw it coming, but I was curious what was it like to be slapped by a girl. Only time I've ever been slapped by a girl was by this girl. She did it twice. The second time was because I said to her, you know, I've never been slapped by a girl before. So, of course, she had to do it again. It was cool. I kind of liked it. The point is, Matt... Matt, who, as Daredevil, can see this coming from a mile away, and it's just like, Psh, I could just, you know, whoop, you know, dodge this, whatever. No, he took it. He took it like a soldier. He was cool. Like, pow! Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. But she doesn't know that he's Daredevil. She doesn't know he's got radar senses. She thinks he's just some blind guy. That's a sucker punch. That's vile. That's cold right there. Like, you, you know, if I'm going to come up and I'm going to give you a smack or something like that, you can at least, like, turn your face a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Try and move back. Make sure, Try and hope she doesn't get you in the ear. That's that's what's about. You get cuffed in the ear. Oh, man. That's, like, the worst, right? You know, try and make sure it's just full face, not the ear. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not quite the temple. Maybe it doesn't get you in the eye or something. Like that. The fingernail in the eye. <laughs> Anybody who's had their, their retina scratch, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. But he couldn't even close his eye. You know, as a blind person, can't even close your eye, right? Because you don't know what's coming. Hitting a blind person, dude, you like th that might as well be like punching a kid. Like that is just stone cold vile right there. Reprehensible. She is a personal basket of deplorable. Boom. Done. <laughs> Let's talk about number four on this list. Um, they're trying to make Detective Cole look like a hero. And it's going to work. It's going to work. All you ever have to do to go from being a villain to a hero, for the most, and, and I say all you have to do, like it's the easiest thing in the world to do. It's a simple formula, but the actual application, in order for it to not feel generic, takes a little bit more, like what Chip Zardowski is doing. This is a guy who attacked our hero, but he's slowly realizing, 14 issues in, 
you know, maybe he's not so bad. That, is, that takes a special kind of character to admit when you're wrong. Because let's face it, most people in society can't do that. They simply don't have the faculties to admit when they're wrong. Detective Cole, he's realizing that he was wrong. And he's slowly coming to that realization and slower still trying to mediate that. I love that. He's, at some point, he's probably going to wind up being killed. Okay, it will probably mean something when he dies. If not, we've got a cool ongoing character that, you know, uh, Chip Zardowski created. Rock on. Finally, let's talk about number five in this list, and that is going big time. Daredevil isn't happy just going after the basic crime in, this, you know, in the streets and things like that. No, 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 no. He wants to do this bigger. The first time I met Donny, uh, Donny Cates, the first time I met Chip Zardowski was three years ago at Mississauga Comic Expo. He was there with Ryan North, another great human being, and just, boom, there, all access. He was the greatest guy in the world when he was best, back when he was still reading Peter Parker, The Spectacular Spider-Man. I think issue five had just dropped that week. And yeah, and we were talking about that and what's to come and him writing the, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the, the Marvel 2-in-1 with Ben Grimm and all that. Yeah, <clears throat> all that. And he did a conversation up on front with this guy, Fearless Fred, who is a DJ at local radio, and he was with Ryan North doing this, and he and Ryan North were talking about how Batman is just this dude, he's like a one percenter who puts on a costume, goes out at night, and punches poor people in the face. Of course, this is just a seriously dumbed-down version of that. Don't go looking at that latest, uh, who's that guy, um, Hassan Minhaj or something like that? Whatever, the the guy who got banned in Saudi Arabia and China for his Netflix series, which is on right now. Great show, I love it. A little bit too much comedy, but whatever, I love it. He talked about this with some dude recently also, and yeah, that that's basically what, when you, in a nutshell, without actually understanding the comics themselves, that's what... Batman appears to an outsider, right? Because he could change things through his money. Well, Daredevil doesn't have that money. And he's also understanding still that, hey man, I might not be able to go and affect things with, you know, all this money that I don't actually have and, and do things for the better. But what I can do is stop punching regular criminals in the face, try and go after the governor of New York. This is getting tasty. I love this book. It's one of the reasons why I did such a ridiculously long review on this issue. This is an unbelievably spectacular comic book. Not just Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man. No, no, no. This is amazing. Where Zardowski is going with this, I could speculate. I could guess. I don't want to. I just want to sit back and enjoy the hell out of this ride. But peeps... If you're just doing trade paperbacks of this, well, it's time to go out and grab the most recent two and catch up. And then just grab the floppies here, because you don't want to wait for this. What you want to do is read this, let the excitement build up. I, I get it. I get it. Maybe you're a trade paperback uh, type of person. I'm just saying, I, I love when this book ends, and I'm just like, crap, i got to wait another like month or so to get the next issue. But that anticipation is worth it. Because when I see this up on the shelves, I'm like, who oh, Daredevil's out this week? <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say I got a really sad life. That something like that, uh, you know, gets me popping. But this is a comic book channel, you know. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm done. Professor Bell Comic Book University. Class dismissed.